Have you ever considered how antithetical statements in the Bible can be used to bring clarity to the gospel? Antithetical assertions are effective because they help people see contrasting consequences. Just as a diamond sparkles brighter when it is laid on a black cloth, the gospel shines brighter when contrasted with the darkness of sin and deception. There are many antitheses revealed in God's word, including Christ and Antichrist, advocate and adversary, believers and unbelievers, eternal life and eternal death, light and darkness, justification and condemnation, truth and error, righteousness and lawlessness, the church and the world, regenerate and unregenerate men, heaven and hell, and children of God and children of Satan. Death versus life and man's wages versus God's gift. One of the most powerful and consequential uses of antithesis is found in Romans 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In this verse, wages is contrasted with gift and death with eternal life. These are powerful words that are direct opposites. God's free gift of grace is not something anyone can earn as a wage for our works. Instead, Paul presents man as affecting his own death by the wages of sin. However, God offers man eternal life by his grace, which is totally free of man's merit. The law of antithesis is used by the Holy Spirit to show the helpless state of sinners and the incomprehensible grace of God. Paul repeats this assertion that God's saving grace must be exclusive of man's works in Romans 11 verse 6. For if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. Salvation is all of God and not of man. Two verses that have set so many Roman Catholics free from the bondage of religious deception are Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works so that no one may boast. Paul destroys the false teaching of a works-based salvation by declaring salvation is all of God and not of man. Salvation is by God's grace through faith in what God has done, not by works man must do so that no one may boast. In Titus 3.5, Paul uses antithesis again to destroy a works righteousness salvation. He, being God, saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at scripture juxtaposed with Catholic teaching. As we witness to Catholics, it is effective to show how biblical doctrines are diametrically opposed to Catholic dogmas. Which Jesus do Catholics trust? The Apostle Paul warned that some would come and preach another Jesus whom the Apostles did not preach. Have you ever considered how the Jesus of the Catholic Church is with the true Jesus who is gloriously revealed in Scripture? Consider the Lord Jesus Christ of the Bible as he is juxtaposed against the false Christ of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Jesus gives believers eternal life and promises they will never perish, John 10, 28. Rome's false Christ offers only conditional life without any assurance that they will never perish. Jesus purifies from all sin. Rome's counterfeit Christ does not purify all sin. Jesus will remain in heaven until he appears a second time without reference to sin, Hebrews 9.28. Rome's false Christ returns every day to be offered for the sins of the living and the dead. Jesus finished the work of redemption on the cross, Rome's counterfeit Christ continues the work of redemption on an altar. Jesus redeemed believers from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, Galatians 
Rome's false Christ requires Catholics to obey the law to attain salvation. Jesus is the only sinless mediator between God and man, 1 Timothy 2.5. Rome's false Christ is not the only sinless mediator. The counterfeit Mary of Catholicism is a sinless mediatrix who brings Catholics the gift of salvation. Jesus is the only way to the Father in heaven. Rome's false Christ is not the only way. Rome declares Muslims who reject Jesus as God and deny that he died on the cross are a part of God's plan of salvation. Using these points and counterpoints can be very effective in warning Catholics that they need to know the true Christ and his all-sufficient finished work of redemption. They need to know that the Eucharistic Christ is a false Christ and to worship the Eucharist is the terrible sin of idolatry. It is no different than the Israelites worshiping the golden calf as the true God that delivered them out of Egypt. God has 3,000 Israelites put to death for their blasphemous sin of idolatry. At the end of time, the Good Shepherd will divide the sheep from the goats. The human race will be divided into two groups throughout all eternity. Some will enter into the joy of eternal life with their Savior. Others will depart into eternal punishment. This should motivate us all with a sense of urgency to lovingly confront people with the truth of the gospel. People will never know they are deceived until they are confronted with the truth.